Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. So in this one, this is part three of the making of my snow cosplay from Once Upon a Time. I've got two other videos at the moment up. The first one is about the pattern, cutting out all of the pieces and starting to make the shell of the bodice. And part two is about making the bodice structure complete with the lining and finishing off the raw edges and things like that. Right now in the video clips that you can see on the screen, this is me applying the bias binding to the neckline and the collar of the main bodice structure. And that's basically the last thing that I needed to do to finish off that part of this outfit. So in this video, which is part three, I will be primarily covering off how I made the sleeves. So she's got an upper sleeve and also a lower sleeve on each arm. And that will be what the focus of this video um, is. I've also posted all the close friend stories on my Instagram about the making of this cosplay if you're interested in those real-time updates. Um, I would highly recommend that if you are perhaps making this exact cosplay, um, but also if you're making something similar, I think those would be quite useful and very valuable. In the videoed clips that you can see, I'm starting to shape the bias binding around the edge of the neckline and the collar. I decided to fold over the edge of the bias binding yet one more time, just so it becomes a bit narrower on the outside. And also it gives a bit more of that support and structure that's needed. So it stands up really nice and stiff, which is exactly what I wanted. And now I am doing that across the entire neckline and collar as I said and um, this did take quite a while also putting it through the sewing machine as well took um, a long time especially because I wanted the top stitching to look nice and neat from the outside. So as you can see I finished sewing all of the bias binding around the neckline and the collar and that's following the same process that I did for these flaps on her hips. Now that all of that's sewn on, um, I need to hand stitch down these like end bits where they join up at the waist. So you can see that's the center front and then this is the like hip panel flap. And this was just really thick and too, basically too thick to fit underneath the foot of my sewing machine. So I'm just going to go over that now with a needle and thread and same with the other side. I'm using a double thread on a needle and the way I tie my knots is I lick my fingers and I grab the two ends, twist it around my finger a couple times, twist them together using my thumb and index finger and then pull that and there's the knot. I'm going to start on the back side I think and hide the knot underneath here and I always try and hide the knot underneath something so it's not going to be seen from the outside, of course, or even the inside in this case. So this here, this flap, I need to bring up a bit and I'll just use my needle to help me with that. And I'm just going to do simple whip stitches all along here. So to do whip stitches, I pick up a little bit of the base fabric, which is the linen lining layer and then a bit of the top layer fabric, which is the bias binding fabric. And I just can continue that all the way along. And I'm not going through to the outside because I just want this to keep the bias binding on attached to the linen layer, which is the lining. And I'm going up in this direction right now, but I will also have to go back down and secure the bottom part of this as well. So here you can see the tiny whip stitches that I've done. I'm going to flip this around just so I can go back the other way. And I'm going to, oh, there you go. And I'm just going to poke the needle all the way through and get it to the other side after where the stitching is. And then I'm going to continue down this way and across up, up along here and then through to the other side. So when I get 
to this really thick section, I'm just going to stitch through the lining. There's no need to go through all of the layers. This is really just to secure the, um, the bias binding so there are no raw edges anywhere. So it doesn't need to be super strong. So we're getting to the outside now and continuing the whip stitches. Another thing to keep in mind is that this whole area will be covered by the belt anyway on the finished costume so I am not being too precious about how neat this looks. It's more about the practicality of getting the raw stitches, sorry the raw edges out of the way. So we're just about done. You can see the stitches all in there. And the way I'm going to finish this off is poke the needle through to the back. About there. Pull that all the way through. And then we're going to tie a knot on the back. So how I do my knots is I pick up a little bit of fabric usually the base fabric, so in this case the lining. I then thread my needle through this loop, pull, and that's put a little knot in there, and I usually do this a couple times. So let's do it once more. Put the needle through that loop before you um, pull the thread through. And then I just hide my thread underneath, so I go in, the fabric like that and then clip off the remainder of the thread and there you go that is all now sewn down and I will do that to the other side so this is what the jacket is looking like so far um, I'm really loving how it's looking and also how it feels as well it's super light um, the nice linen lining is just really comfortable, it's flexible, but it also has enough structure in like the flaps and like up here as well, like all along here. And I'm so pleased with how this is sitting. <laughs> um, I'm going to leave this um, for now and I'm going to make a start on the sleeves. Um, obviously this still needs to have the studs put on it. Um, but I bought the studs online and they still haven't arrived and I also want to do the studs last. Um, there obviously needs to be a closure here at the centre. I'm thinking of doing hook and eyes here at the centre and then this part here actually overlaps but I want to wait until I've done the belt so I can figure out what this situation needs to be like. And finally the eyelets as well. I'm still waiting on a new awl to arrive in the mail so that will also have to wait and I think it would probably be, be best to be done once I've got the sleeves. Anyway, let's move on to the sleeves. So as a reminder as to what the sleeves look like, um, they look like this, They've, there's the upper sleeve and the lower sleeve and I cut out the pattern pieces um, in part one of this video series so make sure to check out that if you want to see how I did that. Um, but the idea for this is to basically have the outer fabric the lining fabric and then the bias binding at the two edges. Um, pretty basic, so hoping I can get those done today. So I've got all of my snow references here. I've got my big one for next year up in the middle, which is OG snow, I think. <laughs> um, this will be the year of snow for me. And I've also got the drifter reference pictures for the boy because he's working on that. So I actually already started on um, the upper sleeves. I can't even remember when, probably like a week or two ago at this point now, um, but I just sewed the tubes together. Sorry, sewed the, here, like I'll get the flat piece here so I can show you. So I basically folded it and sewed along this edge and then ironed that edge open. And then this is what I end up with. 
um, and I did the same thing for the lining pieces out of the linen and I think I think the next thing that I wanted to do was I'm thinking to sew them right sides together flipping the lining right side out like so and you can see there's a little bit of a curve in this one because it is the upper arm and this is where the shoulder will be so I'm going to put the lining layer inside the outer layer so this will go right sides together and I'm going to match up the seams like that yeah so basically pinning all around this straight edge and then putting that under the sewing machine all right so that's sewn down along the along that straight edge and I think you know the drill. It is time to trim the seam allowance to about half of what it currently is. I'm going to clip in at the very bulky seam where there's like four layers of fabric, um, just because I want to reduce that bulk for when it's turned right side out. And now we can turn this thing right side out. So those match up perfectly, which is amazing. And now I'm going to pull the lining back through the sleeve. And then this edge down here, I'm going to um, iron that flat. Actually, I'm going to be lazy and just uh, finger press this down for now um, because it seems to be holding its shape quite well. So finger pressing just means pressing down really hard um, along along that edge and it and I usually pull on it as well a bit and that usually helps to keep its shape and at the other end I'm going to match up the seam allowance yet again always use the seam allowance as a way to match up everything sorry not the seam allowance the seam itself so those two are matched up and I'm going to just so all along here to keep these two layers um, together and make sure that they don't continue separating while I'm working with it. And for this I'm just sewing with a very narrow seam allowance as this is just to hold the pieces together and it doesn't need to uh, be the same as the actual seam allowance that I've been using to sew this whole thing together. So I've just slipped this on just to see the fit and it's fitting quite snug on my arm but I think that's a good thing like I can still flex and move my arm um, but yeah it's a little bit snug but I think that's fine like as you can see there's a bit of room in here that I can stick fingers under and I'm also wearing like a little cotton long sleeve thing under and all of the fabric has has caught under here um, and I'm actually glad that I did the um, like did this seam on the bottom instead of the top because it, because I think this would be way too bulky on the top here. I'm just going to finish this with bias binding. Same with this, but this one will be a bit more bulky. So following the same process as usual, I'm sure you're very familiar with this by now, um, but pinning the bias binding along the inside edge against the lining. And then once I've pinned all the way around, I will then see where these two edges match up. And then I will sew those down together to join those two edges together. And then I will sew around the entire um, circumference of, of this. Now 
Now that that's sewn, time to flip it to the right side and pin that down. I'm sure you're bored of this process already. <laughs> Now, even though it's really awkward to, I need to sew from the top side of the sleeve um, just so I can get the top stitching looking nice. And unfortunately, the sleeve doesn't fit under my like sewing machine, even when I take off this front part because it's just a bit narrow. Um, so yeah, I've just got it like bunched it down here, but I'm just making sure that I'm only sewing through the layers that I want to. Fit check. I'm gonna pull my sleeve down through it this time as well. Hopefully it's not this difficult to put on with the uh, undershirt. I'm gonna to have to keep the sleeves very narrow. I might actually use this dress as a um, pattern almost, try and copy this sleeve for my dress. I'll obviously make this opening larger, but I mean, just for like all the fabric in this area. Okay, that's looking good. I'm hoping that it still will fit nice once the eyelets are on. Um, and I will still need to iron this bottom section just because I don't want it to be bulky. So flattening it out as much as possible is the best way to go. And then also giving this top part an iron as well. And that will be one sleeve done. And then I have to do three more. So I am adding bias binding to the top of each of the armband things. So you can see this one still needs doing, this one still needs doing. This one is completely finished and I'm currently working on this one at the moment. So almost there. What are you doing? I'm building my uh, great armies. Great armies? Yes. Oh, you're doing armbands like me too. Yeah, like this. I like it. So, covering the foam in a layer of vinyl and gluing it down. Very good. This vinyl came in handy. Mm -hmm. Is this one from Chris? Um, I can't remember who gave I, me I this one. We picked up a heat from Chris a while back. Possibly? Possibly. Yeah, I think maybe. Okay, I'm gonna go do more gluing, bye. Bye. <laughs> so finally, all of the arm bracer thingies are done. Um, I've got the binding on both ends of each of the pieces and I just need to iron down the seam along here for each of them because they're quite a bit puffy right now. And I'm hoping, hoping that ironing them down will keep them flat and then those are done and I can work on whatever's next. Also, this is how much bias binding I had left after doing all of that. And I realized I need bias binding for the belt along the top and the bottom of the belt. And I literally just, just have enough to wrap around my waist twice. And the belt will be a bit bigger than my waist anyway because it needs to go over all the layers. So if I can't use this, then I'll probably find another solution like using the linen or the leather. Okay, the sleeves are done. This is what it's looking like. Um, the tops are very snug, but the bottom parts are very loose as you can see. So hopefully with the ties, it will hold them up a bit. 
so they're not drooping down here, but also if they droop down here, that's fine as well. Whoa. Um, yeah. <laughs>